and sign. So. OK, are we ready? Yeah. All right. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the International Innovation Talk Germany and Japan. My name is Tom Kuhn. I'm heading the Department for Digitization and Innovation with the Federation of German Industries. And I want to warmly welcome you to this uh, second format of the International Innovation Talk with our friends in Japan. Um, why are we doing this International in Innovation Talk? As you know, German industry is closely associated with the world, both in terms of export orientation, but also in terms of foreign direct investment. We are closely connected to the entire world and of course very closely also with our friends in Japan. But the closeness doesn't only come with goods and services, it also comes with innovation and with research. And innovation and research is a thing that we desperately need these days not so much because this, of course, uh, is in a world that is digitized, uh, the key for new business, but we also strongly believe at the, at the BDI, at the Federation of German Industries, that the challenges that are ahead of us uh, in terms of sustainability challenges, the sustainable development goals, for example, they can only be achieved through the means of innovation and research. We strongly believe in that, and that is why the Federation of German Industry puts a lot of focus on innovation. And on the other hand, we see a lot of rise of protectionism all over the world, unfortunately. And in order to counteract that a little bit, we came up with this new format of international innovation talks, which has the intention to bring countries together, to bring Germany and one other close partner country together in order to discuss innovation and research and in order to discuss the importance of research and innovation for the SDGs for sustainability challenges. And that is the reason why we came up with this new format and we are very happy to welcome you all online here, um, no matter where you are, be it in Germany, uh, here it is nine o'clock in the morning, or be it in Japan where it is uh, five o'clock in the afternoon, or anywhere else in the world, welcome and thank you for um, giving us your time for the next two hours until 11 o'clock. We are always looking for one partner organization in the countries that we do our international innovation talks with. And this time I'm very proud to announce that we are going to do, uh, we are having our international innovation talk with Japan, with the director uh, of the German Center for Research and Innovation in Tokyo, Mrs. Dorothea Manke, whom I very warmly welcome at this point in time too. And she's going to speak to you and uh, describe a little bit uh, the uh, DWIH or the German Center for Research and Innovation and welcome you from the uh, Japanese side from Tokyo. So Mrs. Dorothea Manke, I'm very happy to have you by my side. Uh, I'm going to be moderating this session here today and I'm handing over to you now, thanking you in advance for partnering up with us here for this great format. Thank you very much in advance, please. So thank you very much, Dr. Koenen, and thank you very much for the nice introduction. It's also a great pleasure to be co-organizing this event uh, together with the Federation of German Industries. Thank you very much. So please allow me to say a few words about the German Center for Research and Innovation, or DWIH. In short, the DWIH in Tokyo is a network of German research organizations, universities and research-based companies. And we provide a platform in order to make German science and research more visible and more accessible in Japan. Our vision um, and our mission is to raise awareness of the German science, research and innovation landscape and to connect actors in Japan and in Germany. And we were established 11 years ago and we are now managed by the German Academic Exchange Service. So throughout the year, we organize um, multiple networking events for German and Japanese stakeholders um, in this field. And for example, last month, we held a major online symposium on artificial intelligence with over 1000 participants. And we are always happy, and this is an offer uh, to you, to invite speakers interested in collaborating in Japan to our events. And we also have a large network and a large mailing list um, here in Japan. 
And this proves very useful when promoting events in Japan. So if you would like to make events, your events are known to the Japanese OD audience, please do not hesitate to contact us. So uh, this is about us and about today we have the topic Society 5.0, very exciting. It is a topic that we as a DWAH often address with our Japanese partners. It is a great vision, Society 5.0 is a great vision or is the great vision of the Japanese government that takes the German concept uh, industry 4.0 to another level because it addresses society as a whole. So um, Japanese research um, policy is largely shaped by the basic plans for science, technology and innovation that are published every five years by the Japanese government. And the concept Society 5.0 was first proposed in the fifth basic plan in 2015. And we are very honored today that to welcome Professor Yuko Harayama as a keynote speaker who was directly involved in drawing this concept. And actually right now the sixth basic plan is discussed and prepared and will be released I think in January, but next year. And we are very happy that Mr. Fumikazu Sato, the Deputy Director General for Science, Technology and Innovation at the Cabinet Office in Japan is here with us today to outline this new plan. So um, I think it is the perfect time uh, for this web talk uh, to reflect the concept or the two concepts, Society 5.0 and Industry uh, 4.0. And I'm very much looking forward to the presentations and to the discussions. Um, so now let me please introduce today's speakers. So we have three speakers today, three distinguished uh, speakers. And the first one will be Professor Dr. Yuko Harayama. She started her career as an academic with two PhDs in education science and economics at the University of Geneva in Switzerland. And she worked there as a professor as well, later when she came back to Japan at the renowned Tohoku University. Her research interests are, uh, include technology policies, innovation systems, cluster policy and higher education systems. She served as a member of the Council for Science and Technology Policy at, as the Deputy Director of the Directorate for Science, Technology and Innovation at the OECD and as an Executive Member of the Council for Science, Technology and Innovation at the Cabinet Office. Today, Dr. Harayama is an Executive the director charge of international affairs at RIKEN and RIKEN you might not know it um, the largest well it's very famous but it's the largest comprehensive research institutions with a network of world-class research centers and institutes across Japan it's um, the so the sister uh, organization of the Max Planck um, Gesellschaft and the very very close partner um, she also received uh, the French National Order of the Legion of Honor in 2011. And she will introduce the concept of Society 5.0 to us today. So um, as the second speaker today, we welcome Dr. Martin Paul. He is counselor at the, at the German Embassy in Tokyo. And um, being a business economist with a PhD in economics, he has been a management consultant for many smaller and bigger companies in Germany. And in 2010, he has been appointed as a professor for management at the University of Tsukuba, also very renowned, uh, where he teached and researched for seven years. And he has served twice as a counselor to the German embassy to, in Tokyo and has published many articles and books on AI, robotics and industry 4.0 in Japan and Germany. And he will speak about the vision of society 5.0 in a German Japanese context. So the third speaker today is uh, Mr. Sato Fumikazu. He is a mathematician by education and has joined the Ministry of Economy, Trade and Industry today, MITI at a very young age and has also spent six years at the Japanese mission to the European Union. 
He has a long history of working in the field of the promotion of science and technology, being the director for divisions in the ministry, such as the Startup and Technology Division and the Academia Industry Corporation Promotion Division. And he served later as a deputy director general of the Indust Industrial Science and Technology Policy and Environment Bureau. In 2018, he was appointed to the deputy director as a Deputy Director General for Science, Technology and Innovation at the Cabinet Office of Japan and last year in addition to the Councillor for Innovation Promotion. So Mr. Sato will give us an overview about the current research and innovation policies. So let me turn over the floor to Professor Harayama, our first speaker, her presentation uh, and her presentation with the title Why Society 5.0. Dear Yuko, the stage is yours. Thank you very much. Um, let's try to uh, upload my file. Uh, I have some difficulty. Could you just uh, send from your side to sharing the, the slide? Is it possible? Yeah, um, Choto Mate. I <laughs> I'm trying to do that, but I don't find the link. Now, whilst we're waiting, Mrs. Uh, Professor Harayama, uh, thank you from my side also for having uh, taken your time. It's a great pleasure having you here, and I'm very, very curious to hear about the um, well, the the origins uh, of the entire Society 5.0 concept, which of course is very, very um, uh, known in the world. And I can ass assure you that from the German side, a lot of people right now are looking at this. A concept uh, being very interested because we, of course, have the question on how Industry 4.0 can be developed. And now I see that the presentation is uh, rolling and okay. I hand over to you, please. Thank you so much. So I have been requested by Joan Reiser to accompany you to uh, discover Society 5.0. So let's start from the beginning. Next, please. Um, a quasi-concept was born on 22 January 2016, when uh, it has been said by Dorothy, the fifth science technology basic plan was adopted by cabinet decision in Japan. Next, please. So, her name is Society 5.0, still not a concept in a sociological sense since originally it was a policy framework proposed by Japan. Next, please. So my tentative today is not to give you an official definition of Society 5.0, but to explain to you how we came up with this idea and in which context. Next, please. So remember, where we were in late 2014 when we started to prepare the forthcoming fifth basic plan. Next, please. Um, Japan was still in the first phase of the recovery from the 2011 Great East Tohoku earthquake. And this within the context of the persisting economic downturn. Next, please. And around the world, we observe, remember, the emergence of Ebola epidemic and many devastating conflict. 
And we had the impression that our democracy was under threat. Next, please. Good news was that the digital transformation was around the corner with all its potential benefits. Next, please. In some, uh, almost impossible to foresee even the near future. So how to prepare the five-year plan in this context? Next, please. Our tentative was to take a new approach. Instead of the usual way of planning, uh, we have decided to focus on some guiding principles, such as human-centered approach, shared value of openness, sustainability, and inclusiveness, and experimentation-driven thinking. Next, please. By doing so, naturally, society backed by science, technology, and innovation became the heart of our fifth basic plan. Next, please. You understand now the origin of society in Society 5.0, so what about the remaining parts, 5.0? <coughs> Next, please. What we had in mind at the beginning was a fundamental question, progress. What does it mean for humanity? And we asked ourselves, what can we learn from history? Next, please. Our tentative was to take a long view of human history, starting with a hunting and gathering society, we call it 1.0, where people were living in symbiosis with nature in order to ensure continuity of our species. Next, please. Curiously, curiosity and exploration are integral parts of human nature not satisfied to be entirely dependent on nature, human began to work on it and farming society 2.0 emerged, leading to a more structured form of a society. Next, please. Then with the invention of steam engine, human mustered power, opening the door to mass production, <coughs> tech-driven manufacturing that we call Industrial Society 3.0. Next, please. And today, we are experiencing digital transformation. Increasingly, value are created by deploying and combining information. In our everyday life, at home, at work, in public space, we are already strong user and consumer information. And our dependency to connectivity seems to be irreversible. It's transforming the way we interact. That's where we are now with Information Society 4.0. Next, please. So what next? Next, please. This unknown to be discovered or more than that, to be built by all of us with a guiding principle I just explained now. We call it Society 5.0. Next, please. To sum up, Society 5.0 is a human-centered society backed by the power of science, technology, and innovation, where people share the value of openness, sustainability, and inclusiveness. Next, please. Since its launch, many interpretations have been proposed. Society 5.0 as a cyber physical system, a service platform, a system of systems, a combination of Internet of Things and big data and AI and robotics uh, as a data driven society. Each of them has its share in Society 5.0, but not exclusively. Also, we have received many feedbacks. First of all, our positive thinking was well received in a world surrounded by many instability and uncertainties. 
We also observed many policymakers around the world expressing empathy to the, to the idea of putting society at the heart of science, technology, and innovation policy. Next, please. Among, and also we, we have received many questions. Among them, it's positioning vis-a-vis -vis Industry 4.0. As I explained to you, the main differences will be summarized as follows. Our preferences for a longer view of human history uh, rather than just looking after the industry evolution, uh, and also the centrality of society instead of industry. Although there is a commonality and common thinking, uh, first of all, going digital as a prerequisite for our actions. Second, sharing the value of openness, sustainability, and inclusiveness are really the common thinking. Third, our concern to better shape our future society is really uh, we are sharing the same ideas. So I'm looking forward to hearing today's audience view to exchange between industry 4.0 and industry uh, society 5.0, but more than that, how we can drive next step to really better shape our future society. Thank you so much. And also today, next please. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry, I, I have this. The last two uh, uh, slides. Could you just upload oh, the last <laughs> part? I'm sorry. Uh, I was. I wanted to talk about uh, the effect of COVID-19. It's okay if it is not on the screen. Um, today we are under COVID-19, and the question will be: Should we revisit this society 5.0? What's happening today is that, first of all, to react to this global threat, we need more science to have a better understanding of SARS-CoV-2. For that, scientists around the world are mobilized and working together. This has an effect of accelerating the practice of open science, sharing data and research results. Also, COVID-19 reduced to be factor pushing large-scale social experimentation. Take the case of teleworking and online teaching. It's underway. In the other hand, we observe that COVID-19 is a factor amplifying pre-existing social divide. Therefore, there is a need for social action calling for solidarity. So my view is that Society 5.0 could provide, continue to provide a frame to build back better our society. So finally, to conclude, uh, I would say Society 5.0 is a wonderful opportunity for all, for business people. Society 5.0 could be a powerful tool to explore unexploited business opportunity because Society 5.0 provide a framework to align business and societal engagement. For academia, Society 5.0 is an invitation to, to dive into the real world. For government, to articulate top-down and bottom-up decision-making and follow us to take responsible action for our future. So what is your version of Society 5.0? I'm very looking forward to hearing from you and taking action with you together, Germany and Japan. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Professor Hayama. Um, and we are going to start the discussion now. And please, as you all are very aware of, of course, um, you can use your hand sign in order to show us that you have a question or a remark. Uh, we welcome you to, to do that, of course. Um, and um, I'm looking if there is anything online right now. But maybe, Professor Harayama, let me start with a, with a question. 
from my perspective, um, I, I think Society 5.0 is a is a brilliant idea. Uh, it is brilliant uh, from my perspective because it early onwards years ago came up with the with the idea that's that's how I understand it that there needs to be a common concept in one nation, the great nation of Japan in this case, to to uh, align everyone, both politics and uh, society and uh, science and uh, economy uh, under one common vision and one common concept. And I think that is something that is missing uh, in many, many nations. And of course, Germany has industry 4.0, which is a strong concept itself. But my impression is that society 5.0 has a, uh, a larger view, taking into account societal questions more than we do. So this is very interesting to us. May I pose the question uh, to you who was really there from the beginning? Were there any specific questions or obstacles that came up early on that you uh, that you had to to uh, counter that you have to deal with that made things difficult? Was it easy to get everyone on board politics and economy and society? Uh, was it a thing that the Japanese society as such embraced from the beginning onwards or did you have to, to convince people a little bit? Thank you. Um. My answer is that at the beginning, I was not for sure that this kind of idea will be adopted by mm. French stakeholders, in particular by business people. Because mm. I know we have kind of division labor between yeah. business, academia, governments, and original citizens. And it was well functioning till now. But as we know today, that the concern is not only business, business, but having at the same time societal issues to be tackled at the same time. And sure. this is not only business people's affairs, but also from the ordinary citizen the actions. So how to align that? And usually it is difficult, even in the Japanese context, it's very difficult task. So mm. our tentative was at the beginning proposed as a framework for policy making in science technology innovation. Way. And the selling this idea into more larger public in the way that it is not only scientific innovation, but the societal concern to work together, uh, to take concrete actions, as though they explained at the beginning that uh, this fifth, five fifth scientific and basic plan has been proposed by cabinet office, by Council of Scientific Innovation. And I was with my colleagues, uh, we, ha we are eight executive members. And uh, among eight, we yeah. had three from industry sectors. So business people, top level business people. And at the beginning, we had a very internal discussion among us, not officials, but between us. And uh, really, uh, I have I've been convinced that uh, three business representative within the council really had the same ideas, same mm. concern about the future of Japan and not only Japan, but worldwide. And they feel comfortable really proposing this approach, putting human at the center and really thinking about how to structure society and within this parts we have strong components of business sector in particular in the japanese case and in germany case mm -hmm. uh, manufacturing sectors and that's the way we try to proceed it is not excluding uh business ideas, but really integrating within and also inviting all people to think about that, to have to say on the concept. Thank you, Thank you very much for, for this uh, brief tour into history, how this came about. Uh, we have a question from uh, Axel Kartenstein, please. Yes, thank you very much. Um, and hello, Japan. I, um, I'm the program coordinator of the uh, German um, Research and Innovation Center in Tokyo, but I'm, I'm this month still working from Bonn, Germany. So um, it's still early morning here. Um, 
Ms. Hadayama, thank you very much. It's very delightful um, to, to hear about Society 5.0. Um, I, I would imagine um, uh, there, there are several aspects where, where people might become concerned. And, and one thing I'm thinking about are, are several um, divisions in society. For example, generational divisions, um, younger mm -hmm. people who are more easily familiar with new technology, um, um, as compared to older people. Um, th this is one divide maybe, um, perhaps in Japan and, and in Germany as well. Maybe there's also another international divide, um, the digital divide between the North and the South. Um, I was curious about your opinion, um, whether we can bridge these divisions very easily and, and what kind of measure, measures um, should be adopted to, to support this process? I'm, I would say, uh, Think about the aging society. I think it's the same concern in Japan and in Germany. Uh, actually, we are trying to really uh, use digital technology to accompany elderly people. And as you know, even just taking a smartphone, it's not so easy for them to use and then, but so what we can do is that we can try to bring some technological solution to overcome this divided, to make much easier, not easier, but really to feel not working with the devices, but uh, something familiar, for example. And sharing information, sharing data, also the same. Uh, you can be accompanied, uh, you can be supported by uh, caregivers who may give more human touch care instead of yeah, because you can use all the new information gathering system in the way that you can leave all these technical aspects to AI, for example, but you can leave a uh, people, person to work with human touch with the elderly people. So we may have really a new view I may say it's not only technological innovation, but the social innovation in some sense to really uh, make uh, reduce or uh, divide it. But we need to be careful about this aspect because without thinking uh, this impact in the negative sense uh, in terms of divided, uh, we, we are leaving aside a really fundamental question. So the question, uh, the, the way you will be approaching is that you have to identify what's the key impacts in terms of divided or ethical issues orders in the way that you can put on the table to find new solution. So it's really um, ongoing dynamic process. And uh, we, we know that uh, even unexpected problem may arise in the future. And but what's, what's really nice that uh, you can have a way to discuss with uh, stakeholders or key actors to find some new solution. It will be the kind of democratic process. But at the beginning, you need to be concerned and conscious about the existence of some generated problems. That's very insightful. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next in line, we have Bernd Schönwilder. If you want to introduce yourself quickly and maybe turn on your video as well, if that's possible, Mr. Schönwilder. Sure. Hello. Uh, thank you, uh, Professor Harayama. Um, my name is Bernd Schönwilder. I'm from uh, the German B2B platform Mercateo. And there we also envisage um, integrating automation, of course, with the business that is done between people. Uh, when I see the what you propose as Society 5.0, this is, of course, seen a, a huge coordinated effort. How do you envisage if new things are proposed or in the experimental approach, businesses might introduce new services? Is this then coordinated or is there a body that steers society 5.0 or how what is it eventually as an institutionalized effort is it just a call to do something or is it institutionalized and in somehow somehow also a governance uh, 
installed in this? What is your systemic approach to that? That would be very interesting to me. Thank you for your question. Uh, the, the, your question is really uh, from this idea, concept, how to implement in reality, that, that, that in short. Um, there are several approaches and uh, still ongoing process. I think you can uh, have some commonality with smart city-like things or living lab or other tools exist on the table. But uh, what I we propose to this concept is really um, to make sure that when you are experimenting something, uh, creating space or new project programs, think about these principles I identify during my presentation. Uh, of course, we'll be tackling other issues by uh, creating a new technology or existing, combining the existing technology, but really uh, based, backed by digital transformation for sure, but not focusing on the technological side, but uh, the idea is really serving, bringing something additional value to those who are using. In terms of comfort, probably uh, more better goods, services, but also at the same time, think about how people within will be exploring this new framework. And as we don't know at the beginning what may happen because human being is so uh, different and interacting differently vis-a-vis -vis technology and vis-a-vis -vis interaction among people. So you, you can't planify in advance everything. So it's, uh, it's not about planning everything, but really to be uh, to have a preparedness ready to really capture what's happening and then able to adjust according to what's happening. And that's why what we are promoting is the idea of experimentations, because you can't start from the beginning, say, I will create new markets with my new devices and sell it, says, uh, because it is something that's if you know something that has been produced by the past, you can go in the next step. But if you are creating something new completely, you have to test on the ground, uh, probably small starts to be sure that you are doing something concrete. And then you have a way to adjust. But once you know what's happening, it's if it's beneficial, why not scale up? And also by doing scaling up, you should be careful about the context to be different. So be careful about that, but don't forget you are serving for people within and you are serving for society and you should listen to those who are using this technology. It's really interactive efforts and probably one way of thinking is that ordinary citizen will be your partner. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. So I'm asking if there are any more questions from the audience. Otherwise, I would maybe end this part uh, of the session uh, with a question from my side, Professor Harayama. Uh, we are going to welcome Mr. Fumikatsu uh, later on. Um, and of course, he's in charge, as you uh, already, as was already said, of the next phase, if uh, we want to call it that way, of Society 5.0. Now, from, from your perspective as one of the inventors, what should be the next step? What would you wish for from the Japanese uh, government, from the METI, from the persons in charge to decide upon for the next phase? So, uh, I'm uh, very, I, I left the cabinet office uh, five years ago. So my uh, successor will be working hard, we really are intensively now and including Mr. Sato. So I'm grateful that they are making a lot of effort. Uh, it's their thinking, but I was quite happy to uh, know that they will be continue to really uh, focus on Society 5.0 to structure their policy. It will be, as I said, 
you may have a different interpretation of Society 5.0. But now I hope that this will become a concept rather than just flaming science, technology, innovation policy. So probably uh, that will be more working with the uh, general public, with companies, it's all the different stakeholders to share this idea and backed by the, all the new policy they'll be implementing as a six basic plan. So I hope it is be aligned in the same directions, but the way they will be approaching will be different. So I'm very happy to know discovering new thinking, new approaches, and why not to go together with Germany and Japan? All right, yeah, we would love that. And we're very eager to learn from Mr. Fumikatsu Sato um, what he will say about it, uh, very curious. But before we come to that, let me thank you very, very warmly for uh, sharing your time with us, for sharing your your uh, experience in the whole topic of Society 5.0. Great having you on board. Thank you very much uh, in thank the name of the entire much. audience. Thank, Thank you very you. much for your mind. All right, and um, we'll come to the next topic. And as uh, um, Mrs. Mark very charmingly uh, already introduced everyone, I don't need to do that and we can keep on with the flow. And so it's my great pleasure to welcome Dr. Martin Pohl, counselor at the German embassy in Tokyo on the vision of uh, society 5.0 in a German Japanese context. Dr. Pohl, please. Thank you very much, Dr. Kuhn. Can you hear me? Yeah, good. Uh, thank you very much uh, for the very kind introduction. Um, yeah, I would like to uh, start with setting society and of course also industry 4.0 in the context uh, of uh, other thoughts so that we have a brief overview. Next, please. So um, there are many uh, publications, many thoughts, starting from 2.0 to 5.0, uh, for example, from the Netherlands, uh, from the United States. Uh, we heard about Japan, there is uh, Germany. All of these thoughts uh, expressed here by four different books, um, they discuss the relation between human and society, between innovation and production. Um, so with slightly different perspectives, uh, but basically uh, it shows that uh, both the industry uh, and society uh, is changing very dramatically. And of course, one of the core uh, fields in between is innovation. Please let me give a very small statement regarding vision. Vision is using always present thought. Uh, we can think from our, what we have now regarding the future. That is a, fish, uh, a vision. The future as such, uh, that is something which is beyond human thought. No? So it is not predictable. I just wanted to mention that because it's crucial for the ongoing uh, thought of mine. As many of our today's audience is more familiar with Industry 4.0 as with Society 5.0, I would like to set these concepts uh, in context to each other, of course, very briefly. Next, please. Now, what is, what is the basic character on the left side regarding uh, Industry 4.0? Obviously, as the name says, it is very closely related to industry, to technology. Um, the thought is uh, basically uh, industrial history or industrial revolution based on technological innovation. And the question which is here asked or which has to be asked is consciousness and human ideas result through technology in better mat material conditions. So the mat better material conditions are the result. And obviously, uh, by uh, doing so, by behaving like that, uh, as individual company, as a society as such, as the state which gives the kind of uh, environment for that, society will be affected by technical progress. Now, how about uh, society 5.0. As we can see here, uh, the thought is very close, at least vis visually, 
related to the age of enlightenment. History is, and Yuko kindly pointed it out before, is a historical process in stages, uh, according to this concept. So, uh, but this of course relates to the question, is consciousness and human ideas about the universe, does it result from material conditions or the other way around? I cannot answer here this uh, question, uh, but of course, if it is like that, it is uh, very close to historical materialism. What I like most, and uh, Yuko kindly pointed it out, it's about discovering the unknown, or, and I will use it during my ongoing presentation, uh, regarding the principle, happiness of people comes first. I think this is a very nice, uh, a very nice statement, uh, which, uh, yeah, which unites all people, not only here in Japan, but in the world. And I think it's a good uh, way uh, continuing our thought. Now, as next step, I would like to explain the very brief thought behind the two con con concepts. Where is this somehow clear for Industry 4.0? It is a rather big challenge for Society 5.0. Saying that regarding Society 5.0, saying that technology A or research on uh, B, uh, that, that is too short. Um, and the, so that means later on I want to set uh, society in a, in a uh, li kind of cultural thought. But please let me first talk about Industry 4.0. Yeah, thank you very much. So um, what is what is the uh, basis for uh, Industry 4.0? Uh, it's basically natural science. We have uh, the, def the, the, the question of diffusion of de development and we have two, two different or somehow uh, uh, um, two different thoughts which are somehow uh, opposite to each other. We have Metcalfe's law uh, saying that uh, the speed is dramatically increasing uh, using uh, the telephones. Uh, when we have two telephones, we have one connection. If we have uh, five telephones, we can already make 10 connections and 12 telephones can already make 66 connection. Yeah? So that means in, if we follow Metcalfe's law, uh, industry 4.0 uh, increases the speed dramatically of, uh, of uh, uh, economic output uh, um, uh, and of course also for the possibilities of consumer. Whereas Ziff's law is the very opposite. He says that um, the most frequent word will occur appro app approximately twice as often as the second most frequent word, th three times as often as the third most frequent word, etc. So Zipf's law is somehow uh, very high speed at the beginning and uh, is slowing down then at the end. So from a business point of view, uh, a company has to decide which way it wants to go, either Metcalfe's law and Zipf's law. Um, what is the other part of natural science based uh, related to industry 4.0 uh, is the speed of development. We have Moore's no. law, which says that the number of transistors uh, double approximately every two years. That means uh, there are companies which cannot go keep up with the speed and others will be too slow and simply will go uh, out of business. Um, now, the, maybe the speed will even uh, dramatically increase following Gambetta's law, which is a very new law developed by IBM, um, related to quantum computers. Uh, so that means um, doubling uh, the volume per year, uh, uh, which would be four times as fast as Moore's law. So these are the basic thought of Industry 4.0 and uh, um, all uh, uh, further um, details uh, can be reduced to that. Next, please. Now, what is Society 5.0? Uh, again, I would like to put happiness of people comes first. Um, and to apply that as it is 
a very complex thought and it's in a very different uh, culture where it has been developed. I would like to use uh, an artist, which I think he, applying his thought, uh, explains that uh, uh, easier. Um, so uh, he says, basically, keep changing, connect with everything, continue forever. That is his basically uh, his philosophy. Um, now, uh, based on based on that, based on that, uh, uh, there is uh, the relation between. Uh, our virtual way of uh, approaching the world, and there is our actual life. And we have to bring that somehow together. Uh, that, is the main, that is the main challenge. So for society, virtual and actual life is supposed to be a life in harmony. And every human has to search for that by him or herself. I think that is the way how we can approach uh, society uh, 5.0 um, in a way uh, which is, uh, uh, yeah, somehow achievable for Western um, people. Okay, so then uh, next slide, please. Then I would like uh, to set that which is rather uh, uh, abstract into a rather concrete uh, thought, uh, as most of the people uh, watching us today, seeing us today, are from the management field. And I would like to, to say it from a management point of view using uh, the field of labor or work. So first two or three statements and then I will explain it, what I mean by it. The core of industry 4.0 is about get, uh, how to get the job done, while society 5.0 is emphasizing on how to optimize the men our responsibility to get the job done. First statement. Second statement. Different from industry 4.0, which features effectiveness of using automate, automated machine, Society 5.0 focuses on the effectiveness and optimizing knowledge workers assisted by intelligent machines. And third statement, Industry 4.0 is about computerized communications by all means. Society 5.0 is meant for the harmonization of work with the help of intelligent machines for the benefit of workers. To explain that, uh, I would like to use uh, this uh, by using the German and Japanese referent architectures um, uh, for modeling business plans. Now, this is the German, sorry, next, please. This is the German so-called RAMI uh, 4.0, which is the standard uh, reference architecture uh, for industry uh, 4.0. What we see here, uh, I try to encircle it here with red, is some elements where human work is uh, crucial. Yeah, these 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 elements could not be done without uh, human beings. They, we, we have no artificial intelligence. We have no robots uh, uh, which could do that entirely. So we still need human being. But the the work here is not specified at itself. It's not in the center. Uh, what is in the center is basically operations research um, based uh, or implemented in, uh, for example, SAP software. Um, this is the, 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 the basic uh, structure of uh, implementing uh, Industry 4.0 uh, in, in Germany. Next slide, please. When we see the Japanese ref, uh, uh, um, reference architecture, we have an entire different picture. We have the dimming circle in its start. Dimming circle is basically plan, do, act, uh, plan, do, check, uh, and do action. That is something which is typical and very profoundly related to human being. It could be one human, it could be two humans, it can be a team of people, it can be an entire department, it can be an entire company. Yeah. So on the left side of this uh, slide, you can see uh, one cube could be theoretically one person or one group, and in total it can be uh, a working unit, it can be many working units, it can be a branch of a company, etc., etc. Uh, this is this is the core of the Japanese way of uh, of of of, uh, of 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 work uh, in 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 this uh, modern way of thinking. Um, 
and if we see it, if you set it into a larger context uh, in the manufacturing process, we see again that the entire uh, um, law, uh, layers, they are basically uh, including uh, human being and human thought. That is a fundamental difference uh, of approaching, uh, uh, approaching uh, processes of uh, producing goods and services between Japan and Germany. And I want to underline, of course, the starting point and the ending point are very, very similar. So that's why it is basically very easy for, and I come to that in a second, for Japanese and Germans to talk uh, to each other. But the in-between, that is sometimes quite funda uh, different or sometimes fundamental opposite. Next, please. So I would like to give a first result for German-Japanese cooperation, uh, focusing on the challenging of the operative lab. Yeah, as I just said, both Industry 4.0 and Society 5.0 are linked to innovation, causing interaction between the way how human produce and society as a whole. That's basically no difference. Uh, of course, Society 5.0 uh, sets it by name in, in its core, uh, which does uh, the German industry 4.0 does not do. Interestingly, this is just a sidestep. The Japanese use the English word society 5.0, not the Japanese word Shakai Go Tensero, which is a very interesting sidestep. But anyhow, this is basically what they have in, in similar, uh, what they have in common. Um, yeah, so the overall targets, uh, the expected financial achievements of Japanese science policy and German science policy, Japanese business and German business are quite in line with each other. This is, of course, now just a statement which I say like that, but it's out of my 15 years experience living here in Japan. As a result, on a high level discussion, common understanding can be achieved very quickly. However, the challenges on the operative level, as discussed before, how the approaches, how to approach the targets, how the way to work are very different, sometimes opposite. Yeah? And interestingly, these topics are excluded when making, for example, an agreement between the two countries, if on government level or on company level, uh, they are usually not uh, discussed in, in detail. So now, as next, I would like to show as an example, the meta concept of Kedan Ren, which I think where it is easy to find uh, an agreement. Next, please. So uh, I think this is a very nice, uh, very nice uh, so um, uh, um, slide. Uh, in the middle, you can see actually it's uh, Metcalf's law. Yeah, so these many telephones lines, and which means that there are many, many, many uh, uh, opportunities. And outside, there are some examples, uh, for example, smart cities, for example, uh, 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 collecting oceanographic data, etc., etc. That is, I think, something uh, where everybody can agree, and it's nicely set into the social development uh, goal. So that that, uh, that is a very um, a good good uh, uh, approach. Uh, and it's a very nice approach for Japan, not only for Japan, but of course, especially for Japan uh, to talk with the world. However, there is also critical thought about uh, Society 5.0. So this critical thought is somehow uh, too short. I have next slide, please. Um, and I want to use the uh, UNESCO uh, position towards uh, Society 5.0, uh, um, saying that the concept of Society 5.0 has gradually become a centerpiece of the Abe, well, its previous prime minister now, cabinet uh, of Suga is continuing. The, we will hear that later from Mr. Sato. Uh, from his growth strategy, which means that science and technology and innovation has become a, a mainstream in political agenda. I think that is basically a very good uh, news that so science is a very crucial part in politics, which in the past not always has been. Um, so, uh, on, in addition, 
uh, of course, the Society 5.0, and, and that is what uh, Yuko also pointed out before, uh, it was started in a time when Japan had a difficult time after the earthquake and Fukushima and uh, the, the world economy was uh, somehow in a different uh, yeah. situation. So uh, a difficult time for the world and also Japan. Yeah. Um, and in this context of intensifying global competition, the changing structure, uh, uh, depopulation, aging, uh, growing fiscal pressure from rising the government, uh, especially for social security, that was a big challenge. And in that sense, um, a difficult time when uh, th this has been started. But saying that this is somehow nebulous, I think it's a little bit short. Um, and uh, I think it's rather the chance uh, that still a lot of work has to be done. Next slide, please. So, um, again, I would like to use, uh, and that is also my outlook, uh, the, the statement of happiness of people comes first. And I would like to say it as a management task. Management task, not only in the context of companies, but also for governments, etc. Humans do not share a knowledge about something, but also about themselves. Who we are, however, is not defined by data, uh, who we are. Yeah? If we reduced ourselves to our name, to our age, to our gender, it would be not uh, enough. Yeah, but hum being human is always related in social processes of recognition or disregard. There's many uh, possibilities in between. We are talking now on the screen. Uh, maybe you as uh, uh, a kind audience uh, are liking my, uh, my presentation or not. Uh, anyhow, there will be some who like it more and some less, but that is not related to my name or age. So that means uh, uh, not we are not identical to our object or digitized personal data. Yeah? And this, this difference uh, between data, context, between who and what we are, uh, is, can be called uh, ethical difference. Now, what, interestingly, uh, uh, Yoko was uh, uh, saying that indirectly as answer uh, to the question of Mr. Schönwelder before. Uh, so what, what could be worked out on, based on this ethical difference? When we understand uh, what the ethical difference is in each country, uh, we can uh, uh, cooperate better with each other. We can, um, we can have, uh, uh, if, if we set that into a management task also on on lower level, lower level in inverted commas, uh, for inventing new products. We need to understand, we need to understand uh, what people want to have. And we need to understand that not only in a way that people say, put its, these data somewhere in a computer, but we need to ask them, we need to have the interaction. Yeah, and I want to close that with one very nice example uh, out of my working experience. A couple of years ago, a good friend of mine said to me, I want to see here these very nice uh, robots in the uh, healthcare and long-term uh, care um, field. Uh, and there are many of these kind of very modern and advanced uh, devices here in Japan. And I want to see them in a hospital. Then I asked a good friend of mine, Japanese friend, who is a director of a hospital, and he said to me, no, we, we are here a low-tech hospital. You know why? Because when there is a problem with one of these devices, who will pay for it? Is it the doctor, the hospital, somebody else? The problem is we did not have yet an ethical discussion about what is accepted by society or not by society. And this is, uh, of course, hindering further innovation because which company wants to invest in something when they don't know if a device is accepted then by society or not. So uh, here we are coming to the very begin. Innovation can be only done if that is accepted by society. Uh, and for doing so, we have to understand uh, this ethical uh, difference. 
Um, and I think Society 5.0 gives us the chance to think very deeply about that and also gives us the chance to talk not only within governments uh, or within companies, but also in the international context. And maybe, let's say, even in a global context, when we think of COVID-19, do we want to have uh, countries where certain data uh, uh, are detected, where uh, software is detecting if somebody is meeting each other, if that is state enforced or not. So many, many questions here. Uh, and I think for this, uh, Society 5.0 gives a very nice platform. Thank you very much for your time and for your kind attention. Thank you, Dr. Pohl, for this, this uh, very interesting introduction and the comparison of the two concepts. Uh, very good. Thank you so much. So I'm going to ask um, the audience, are there any questions or remarks and comments on the presentation of uh, Dr. Pohl? Otherwise, I would uh, go ahead, Dr. Pohl. Um, from your experience, uh, looking at both of those concepts, uh, the German concept of Industry 4.0, uh, from my perspective, of course, is a, a technological vision rather than a societal vision, as you said, but it also includes a competitive edge. It has, of course, the intention um, to give German industry something like a technological lead uh, having a comprehensive view on technological advancement, using the data, using AI, and putting it all together in terms of creating new business and uh, making uh, existing business more efficient, as you said. So from my perspective, there is a competi competitive um, part to Industry 4.0. Now, if we look at Society 5.0, is there something like a competitive aspect to it? Do the Japanese people, do you um, consider it not only as a concept to deal with inherent problems in, in Japan or challenges, but also in coming up with something that puts the Japanese society uh, ahead, maybe, uh, in the competitive international game? Thank you. Thank you very much for this very interesting question. And it's uh, somehow also, in good sense, a very sensitive question. Um, I would like to focus on two points. The first point is uh, at the very beginning from history, and uh, Yoko explained about the history, I think there was uh, a quite, uh, yeah, uh, the cabinet office and uh, the main uh, industrial supporters, especially around uh, Hitachi and uh, Kedanren, um, they were quite in line. But uh, a little bit later, I think there was, uh, 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 and, and, and at that time, I think the focus was, in fact, uh, the, the Society 5.0 was Japan-centered. It was not really open for the uh, for other countries. Uh, Japan, what Mr. Abe said, I, 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 I may quote him, uh, we want to create the most advanced society, that is where his words, that means that Japan is uh, in, in good sense, uh, this is not Trumpism, it's in good sense Japan wants to be uh, uh, the most advanced uh, society, um, which does not specifically exclude other nations, but at least first Japan wants to create it and then maybe share it or maybe not share it. Um, Interestingly, then a little bit later, uh, I had a nice uh, symposium where exactly this question was asked to a Kedan uh, presenter, and he said, hmm, yeah, we have to think about how can we bring this concept into the world, because uh, we want to, uh, yeah, in good sense, we want to share it, but we also want to compete with our uh, uh, partners. Uh, and to do so, we have to open it. Yeah, we cannot exclusively discuss it. We have to open it. And then Kidan Ren uh, uh, came up with the idea to connect it with the social development, with the SDGs. And I think that was a very, very big shift uh, away from the original idea of the Prime Minister's office. Uh, also in the time when Abenomics was somehow uh, coming to a kind of end, and of course Mr. Abe had to bring something new. 
Uh, and Kidan Ren brought it to the shift away uh, from a Japan only focus to a global focus. And later, of course, uh, also that was my impression. Uh, of course, I just can observe it. Uh, the, the the cabinet office uh, follow to that. And I think now we have a very nice situation that Japan is open, is somehow uh, bringing its know-how uh, into the global agenda. And uh, yeah, I deeply appreciate that we have now the chance to communicate and talk with Japan about that. I hope this answers your question. Yeah, it does very much. And I like, I like the idea very much that uh, Japan as a society has a unique Japanese perspective and concept on dealing with the SDG challenges. I like that very much because that is something I have the impression most nations, including Germany, lack uh, in the way that Japan has. So, Mrs. Uh, Mr. Karpenstein, please. Oh, I'm Mr. sorry. Karpenstein, okay, we cannot hear yep. you yet. Thank you. Yeah, you have to press uh, two buttons, and then it works. <laughs> Thank you very much for this this very delightful presentation. Um, you mentioned at the outset um, the connection between uh, the situation people are in, the the environment, and people's consciousness. Um, I'm I'm wondering since we're approaching this major upheaval in society. Uh, whether our labor market, whether people who work in this environment, whether they're ready in Japan and uh, in Germany, and um, if not, what should be done to support this transition? You know, things become faster, this, this great interconnectedness, um, there's most likely there will be much stronger demand on, on technological um, knowledge. Um, so that's the background why I'm, why I'm asking. Okay, thank you. This question, of course, has many sub aspects. It has some uh, very large aspects. If people are in general ready uh, uh, to to deal with this kind of new world, or if some people simply drop out, yeah, as as individuals. And of course, the same thing for for the labor market. But taking your question, as our audience is mainly uh, business related, uh, then the question occurs. Who will do these jobs? Who will work in this new environment? And who will do the jobs in future? No, that is a very uh, operational question. And I think um, both countries, Japan and Germany, think very deeply about that. Their approaches are not exactly the same, uh, but uh, they are going both in, a, uh, in somehow a similar speed. Uh, in Japan, there is a, a committee uh, related to the so-called Robot Revolution Initiative, which is uh, related to Industry 4.0. And they are working off uh, what is called a Takumi 4.0. Takumi can be translated as Meister. And uh, this, this working group is considering how to train people to work uh, not only as in the past, looking at a person who can do things well, but that they also can program, that they can uh, learn by themselves, in that sense that they can leave the master uh, and add that to um, and add that to their knowledge. And of course, the uh, my, uh, Mr. Sato will be certainly be able to explain much better. There are many initiatives by the Japanese government to uh, teach uh, uh, students, starting from. Uh, high school time uh, and also in universities uh, to learn some basic program. Now, if that will be really a, a breakthrough, I don't know, we, nobody knows, uh, but at least it's a starting point so that students, even students, let's say, of uh, foreign languages or students of sports have to study at least some program. That is uh, another point where the, the Japanese government is doing. What is missing here is actually the role of the social partners, which is a strong role in, in Germany, which is, I think, um, uh, improving there the situation. Uh, so that in the companies, uh, uh, in the German companies, uh, there is a general uh, yeah, uh, social agreement, and uh, let's say bringing society forward. I think there is a rather strong agreement, basically, 
in, in German enterprise. Uh, this, uh, as the, the social uh, uh, partner system here is different, it depends really on the, on the uh, individual country. I hope I could answer your question. Yeah, thank you very much. It, yeah. I, I was thinking about what you just mentioned. There, there was a, a news clipping last week, uh, one university in Japan, Chuo University. They're, I think starting next year, they're, they're making um, basic courses in, in artificial intelligence mandatory for all entry-level students. Um, and that makes me wonder, of course, whether we are equally well, well prepared in Germany. Yes. Um, I had two years ago a, delic a group of members of parliaments here uh, and a, a Japanese uh, a presentation based on a Japanese presentation that uh, in high schools uh, students have to learn already programming. The question came on the table, okay, uh, we are also thinking about that in Germany, but we do not have enough teachers for teaching uh, in, in, in that field because these people are usually very expensive. Uh, and then, interestingly, the Japanese uh, speaker said, yes, we have exactly the same problem. Right? So again, I think here is a quite, even though the, the way how things are done, the thought is quite similar and also the challenges are similar, basically. Right? So, um, yeah, we are, we are both in both countries on a good way, but uh, uh, it's, 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 it's rather a marathon than uh, a 100 meter uh, speedy track. Thanks very much. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Paul, for, for this insightful speech of yours. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, we now have had the history, the genesis of Society 5.0. We have a very comprehensive comparison to Industry 4.0. Now let's look into the future. Let's look at where Society 5.0 as a concept uh, is going forward to. And I'm very uh, delighted to, to welcome Mr. Fumikatsu Sato, whom I see already here on video. Thank you very much uh, for taking your time, for being with us, for sharing your insights. We are very sure that you are very busy these days, uh, drawing up the concept and uh, getting into all the details. Um, we are very happy now to hear where you're standing. So, Mr. Fumikatsu Sato, the Deputy Director General for Science, Technology and Innovation at the Cabinet Office. Very proud to have you here. Mr. Sato. Yes, thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, first of all, uh, for organizing very well organized meeting today and a very interesting discussion today. And uh, I'm very pleased to share our vision with uh, the audience and uh, also, this is a very good uh, occasion for me to share and uh, exchange uh, uh, the opinion concerning the uh, Society 5.0 and also uh, Industry 4.0. Let me introduce myself uh, uh, first. I'm so Sato Fumikazu. Uh, now, nowadays uh, in Japan, we have to uh, say the family name first. <laughs> And so Sato Mikaz, and I'm counselor for innovation promotion, cabinet secretariat, and also deputy director general for science, technology, and the innovation cabinet office. So, uh, as uh, Dr. Paul said, uh, I'm really, you know, in charge of the science and technology uh, policy in cabinet office. So perhaps. I can reply some, I can answer some questions which you posed uh, in the lecture of uh, our, uh, our uh, presenters. And uh, also, uh, I'm originally joined the METI, Ministry of Economy, Trade and Industry. Uh, and uh, I joined the uh, cabinet office uh, three years, two, two and a half years ago. And, uh, uh, when I worked in METI, uh, I was really in charge of uh, Industry 4.0 because at that time, uh, it was four years or five years ago, I was Deputy Director General of the Manufacturing Bureau of METI. And this is really counterpart of the uh, policy, German, German policy of uh, Industry 4.0, and uh, I had a lot of discussion with uh, our friends in German, 
Germany uh, concerning the industry 4.0. And we studied a lot about your very exciting and, uh, you know, very intelligent policy. And uh, that was why we focused on the, our relevant policy, namely connected, connected industries. And I will explain about it uh, later. But uh, uh, first, Rich. Uh, first, I have to uh, explain the current situation concerning the science technology policy in Japan. This is a schema which uh, in, underlines the, in, the importance of the science and technology uh, policy in Japan. I, I mean, uh, after the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, our citizens, I mean Japanese people, are really keen on the uh, research and development promotion because they are really willing to have good solution about the uh, uh, solution or measures against the uh, COVID-19. It means uh, diagnosis or uh, other uh, vaccines uh, or other uh, related solutions uh, against the COVID-19. And it explains that one year ago, one year ago, the uh, expect, ex, expectation, public ex, ex, expectation for promotion of research and development was 40% only, but it increased very suddenly, uh, quickly, uh, this year in March, uh, this point uh, are raised to uh, about 60%. And all of all the Japanese people are really waiting for the new solution about uh, concerning the COVID-19 pandemic. And uh, under this situation, we are now focusing on our, uh, our new basic policy uh, uh, concerning the science, technology, and innovation. So this is a, a schema about the transition of the Japanese science, technology, and innovation policy. It was about two, 25 years ago when we uh, established the first plan, namely uh, Japan science technology, technology policy uh, plan. Uh, this was based on the uh, base, basic act it means basic roles on uh, science, technology, science and technology. And at that time, we focused on the, uh, the investment of the science and technology to, to the uh, relevant sectors. And uh, so in the first round, we established the target of the uh, budget uh, during the five years and it was uh, um, 17 trillion yen. And uh, it, at that time, it was really uh, very, how to say, uh, very excellent uh, uh, target at that time. But nowadays, uh, we, are we are under the fifth plan, uh, and uh, we are our investment is now uh, focusing on the, uh, about two six trillion yen during five years. So, so our budget, uh, it means the national budget concerning the science and technology increased very rapidly. But uh, uh, fifth plan, in fifth plan, uh, what is the most important is which we are uh, discussing is society 5.0. This is a really target of the uh, our future uh, society. And uh, uh, this concept is a really new approach for uh, Japan, as well as I think for the world, I think. Because as, uh, as Dr. Paul said, we focused on the future society, not the industry or not the uh, research and development. We focused on society and what is the expectation of the next generation or our next society. That is uh, our, uh, our focusing point. And uh, we are now uh, under the fifth plan, so we would like to realize this uh, society 5.0, uh, hopefully until uh, 
uh, in a couple of years. But that is difficult. And uh, uh, perhaps Dr. Harayama sensei explained about the uh, Society 5.0. So I, I explained very quickly. Society, the concept of the Society 5.0 is a human centered society and a uh, highly integrated uh, cyber space and uh, fiscal space. And then we use this concept or this approach. We would like to have good resolution of social problems. These are three points which I have to underline. And uh, that is a three points, uh, which is a main concept of this uh, uh, society 5.0. And the society 5.0, so society 5.0 uh, realize not only the uh, 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 development of the technology, but also that will reform, that will change uh, our society and also our perhaps life and lifestyle. Uh, the right hand table, right, right hand. <laughs> I explained that in the cyberspace, big data will be used very, very, very uh, precisely. And uh, so on the, to do so, uh, we use a lot of sensor information. So sensor will be very necessary. And, and uh, uh, with the big data, uh, AI system, AI uh, artificial intelligence will analyze very, very quickly and uh, precisely, and uh, this cyberspace will create a high value added information and also a proposal or uh, our new operating system or uh, infrastructure in, in, in instructions. So that is why we, we, uh, we are insisting on the importance of Society 5.0 because, you know, so, we create the uh, mix of the uh, cyberspace and integration of the cyberspace and the physical space, then uh, this will uh, cause a very good result about the solution and uh, also some development of our lifestyle. And But uh, what is much important is, you know, so this space or this uh, a society should be for the human beings. So uh, we 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 un underline again and again the importance of the uh, human-centered society. And the next uh, uh, page explains uh, the duration between the society 5.0 and uh, and uh, industry uh, 4.0, or we are calling uh, in Japan uh, or not we, uh, Meiji is calling. Uh, in Japan, the connected industries. So, uh, <coughs> yellow line is explaining the five five point zero. So, first is a pri primitive society. Second is agriculture society, and third is industrial society. Five is digital society, and after the digital society, we will have a society five point zero. I think it will be ultra smart society. And between the, these uh, societies, uh, we had, a, uh, this is a blue line, uh, first industrial revolution between the agriculture and the industrial societies. And in the industrial society, we had a second uh, industrial revolution, namely power innovation. And between the industry society and the digital society, we had a third industry revolution, which is based on the information technology. Uh, this is mentioned, or advanced automation, the computers. So uh, this is a current society, a digital society. But uh, if we have a fourth industrial revolution, that is, will be that will be auto autonomy. Uh, based on big data and AI and IoT, that will help to realize the next generation, I mean, our next society, Society 5.0. And the, we need a lot of contribution of this revolution, uh, fourth industrial revolution. And also we 
uh, would like to have good contribution from industries and uh, the industries which help, which support this revolution should be or uh, must be uh, the, the society uh, connected industries and this is i think uh, my impression is that this is relevant to the industry 5.0 so industry 5.0 will use a lot of data and ai and iot and also they uh, they will connect other industries or services then they will realize a new society so this is a relationship between the society 5.0 and uh, uh, connected industries including were relevant to industry 5.0. So uh, next page explains our current short-term strategies concerning the uh, society 5.0. So uh, as you know, our, we are sharing the very difficult situation between Japan, the European Union. So we are under the coronavirus diseases, a very, very bad situation. And the large scale natural disasters are really uh, very critical in Japan. And also uh, we are, we are realized, we realize that uh, we know now the delay in the digital digitalization of Japan uh, because under the COVID situation. So this is our current situation. Uh, some of them are, are, are shared with you, I think. And so under this situation, we are focusing five, three points. One is uh, impact of new coronavirus diseases. Uh, this one. And second is domestic and overseas changes, and also our position uh, of, of, of the digitalization. And then we take into account this kind, these changes, uh, take into account these changes, then we would like to uh, establish or build sustainable and resident social services. Uh, this is the first point of the, our perspective and also we would like to reshape the solidarity in domestic and overseas society so uh, and uh, this concept uh, include uh, that no one is left behind which is uh, uh, really correspond to the uh, SDGs concept I think and so to do so we would like to or we try to accelerate the digitalization and also uh, strengthen the research capacity and uh, also realize a sustainable and resident and human centric society 5.0 and uh, so and, and to do so, we need a lot of comprehensive uh, knowledge incorporate with uh, uh, knowledge of the human and the social uh, sciences. So at this point, I have to underline because now we, the, for the realization of the Society 5.0, uh, yeah, so-called traditional technology and uh, uh, science is not enough. We need additionally uh, some basic idea of humanities and social science. So we will combine this uh, science and technology and or, uh, also humanities and social uh, sciences and then uh, after combining these two big fields, perhaps we can uh, establish, uh, we can realize a society 5.0. <laughs> then, so these are majors, this is a very small character, so you, you can read uh, after my presentation, but uh, uh, several points I have to uh, underline is point two, a creation of innovation. Uh, this is really uh, related to the implementation of Society 5.0. So uh, we now try to implement uh, uh, related uh, relevant measures in order to realize a Society 5.0. But this is uh, also on the road, I think. So uh, we need to uh, accelerate uh, these kind of measures to, to 
to realize the society 5.0. Uh, and also, I have to underline point three as well. Uh, so for the innovation, uh, we need a lot of uh, research. So research capacity is really necessary uh, to, to, to accelerate the innovation. So we are focusing on the research capacity and the research and uh, research capacity and the research and development. And uh, we are focusing uh, uh, first uh, to the younger researchers who will create a new society, I think. So we now uh, uh, proposing a lot of measures uh, to, to, to help to support younger uh, researchers and also, oh, as I said, uh, 3.4, uh, 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 promoting of the humanity and the social uh, so sciences. And uh, point four explains some specific fields of technologies which will certainly be necessary uh, in the in the uh, future, uh, like AI, biotechnology, quantum technology, materials, etc., uh, etc. Et so uh, we are now uh, uh, organizing these kind of you know total uh, arranged measures uh, in the short term. Uh, two examples uh, will be there. Page seven. Uh, first, uh, we are focusing on data, uh, especially research data. So how to collect the data, how to exchange the data is really very important in, uh, in the uh, R&D field. And uh, we now are creating an information system or infrastructure uh, to do so. And uh, the center is explaining uh, NII, National Institute of Information, Informatics, uh, now uh, we have a very big role uh, about this kind of data exchange and data uh, sharing. And uh, we are now uh, creating this system, discovery platform in NII. And uh, uh, through this uh, discovery platform, uh, we will provide uh, uh, metadata uh, uh, to, uh, with which we can share the, uh, the information. Next page explains very concretely. So metadata management is really key of this uh, information infrastructure system. And the discovery platform will use this metadata management then so a lot of researchers or related relevant uh, institute uh, will be able to share this metadata. And uh, after uh, knowing this met metadata, perhaps a lot of researchers can exchange the information and also uh, find uh, the necess necessary information uh, of the other researchers or the other institute. And also, uh, NII is creating a RDM platform. This is a data sharing platform. So, uh, uh, how to say, discovery platform is uh, focusing on metadata. And the DA RDM platform is focusing on data sharing. And uh, Gyro, uh, we are calling Gyro, publication platform is focusing on publication of the uh, research result. So uh, page nine explains uh, uh, our timetable. So uh, NII will uh, operate as full scale, full scale uh, on this year, in this year. And uh, they will implement the metadata management as, as soon as possible. Then point four uh, says that data policy in national research and development agencies will be uh, established very uh, closely. And then data management plan in, 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 in every, uh, for every researcher or for uh, research fund, funding programs, will be done uh, as 
quickly as possible. And then national data policy will be formulated very uh, near, near, very closely. And so these kind of, you know, so uh, information infrastructure is very important, but also some rules or regulation for the management of the uh, metadata or other relevant research data are really uh, key. Uh, they are important for the creation of the exchange of data. And the other example will be the uh, is a AI strategy, which uh, you mentioned. Uh, uh, you mentioned. I mean, so this is a national AI strategy, which is focusing on the human resources. I mean, so. For the next generation, for the society 5.0, we need a lot of improvement of the human resources, uh, especially regarding to the information technology, including the artificial intelligence. So we, uh, we will focus on this kind of education system. Uh, so uh, I, I, I mentioning, I'm mentioning the education reform and also our research and development. And uh, uh, Japanese government uh, will provide uh, uh, the one PC to one student in primary and junior high school. So uh, every primary school and junior, uh, junior high school will be ready to uh, teach the information uh, technology or other uh related uh, skill or knowledge with uh, uh, by using the uh, information infrastructure but the point is the uh, hard hardware is not is not enough i mean uh, how to reform how to improve the software or uh, the approach of the teaching uh, major is really necessary. And uh, we are now discussing very intensively about this kind of you know, new approach uh, concerning the education. And the third example is uh, environment innovation strategy, but the time is <laughs> always uh, two, 20 minutes. So I will uh, finally explain the current position of the uh, next uh, our basic plan, page uh, 13. 13. So this is under the discussion. I think uh, I am providing this English version perhaps very uh, recently. So perhaps a lot of people who are really first to 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 watch this uh, document? We are uh, so as I said, we are now under the uh, fifth uh, basic science and technology plan. But this will finish until the next March. It mean, I mean the, in uh, three months. So we need to establish next basic plan for science technology. And uh, we are now very, very uh, intensive uh, discussion about this plan. And this is a basic idea. These two documents are really basic idea concerning this, uh, this uh, plan. And the basic idea of this uh, plan is how to implement or how to accelerate the implementation of the Society 5.0. So uh, to be frank, uh, under the fifth basic plan, we have not yet implemented uh, Society 5.0 or uh, relevant measures. So uh, we have to continue to uh, try to implement this, these measures and we have to finalize these measures or implementation of Society 5.4, Society 5.0. And the current state is, uh, you know, oh, this is really, uh, uh, as I explained, uh, as a short uh, plan. Uh, so these are really very uh, similar. To the, the to that uh, explanation, but the uh, uh, point is so how which is the target of the next plan? Uh, so I uh, I am sharing the four points. First is ensuring sustainability. 
Second is ensuring resilience. And third is various forms of happiness in the era of when people live for 100 years and longer. And the last one is uh, how to enhance uh, our, our the presence or not present the collaboration or cooperation with the international community. So these are basic perspective for the next uh, basic plan. And the next page explain the measures relevant to these uh, perspectives. So first, and I have to underline the importance of redesign of society. This means really uh, realization of the society 5.0. And uh, for uh, this realization, we need a lot of comprehensive knowledge. And also, this should be uh, included. Uh, we should be include the humanity and the social social sciences, which I mentioned already. And to 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 redesign the society, we have to focus on digitalization and the carbon neutrality and safe, secure, and resilient society, etc., etc. And also, a right part to explain the digital transformation of the research system which I explained uh, as the NII system, and also diverse and excellent research environment, especially for the younger generation, and strengthen the university function and the management. And finally, we will focus as well uh, in, the, in this uh, uh, middle term uh, STI uh, policy, we will focus uh, again the importance of education and the human resources uh, development. So uh, these are uh, now we are uh, discussing uh, how to uh, implement. Uh, the, these are, are the, the measures which we are discussing in our office, but uh, we need a, a more discussion and uh, uh, to, to, to uh, improve our plan and also uh, your inputs uh, for our uh, plan is really uh, appreciable uh, for me. So please, please uh, have a good, have a lot of questions or comments. Uh, this is really helpful for us. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Sato, for this uh, comprehensive overview of where you're standing uh, right now. Uh, that was very, very interesting to me. Thank you so much. Uh, yep. I can assure you that from the German perspective, uh, I yeah. think in terms of development, we're not far from each other. Uh, mm -hmm. Those discussions are the ones we're having in Germany right now. Uh, as Japan is doing, we're discussing a data strategy right now, uh, which yep. is... Uh, um, real in the midst of uh, big discussions also, of course, on the EU level, data uh, and data management systems are a big discussion topic. May I ask a question? In Germany, mm -hmm. um, I think we, we are an innovative country as Japan is, but still when it comes to uh, the subject of personal data and of the usage of AI, mm. there is a lot of fear uh, or, and a lot of open questions involved uh, within the media and the broader public, uh, which sometimes leads to the fact that we're discussing more potential problems mm -hmm. than the real solutions. Um, mm -hmm. I think it's good, of course, to look at prospective risks, but in Germany, the discussion sometimes tends to balance into the direction of only looking at the risks and not into the opportunities as much. Do you experience such a discussion in your society in Japan as well? Yes, yes, this is a really very important point. And so uh, first I have to mention that Japan is uh, one of the countries uh, uh, which, uh, which which are sharing the uh, almost the same rule uh, for the personal data uh, in Europe. So uh, we are relevant uh, in terms of uh, personal severe. data. So yes, yes. So very severe, but very how to say very. I think my, I myself think a very good uh, structure. I think so. And uh, so personal data is really important. And uh, as you mentioned, uh, for for. 
for this for this kind of data, we drive, we are now discussing the data policies, and uh, so all the data is not the same. I think so. We have to focus uh, several data, which should we might be very helpful to improve the society. Uh, mm -hmm. For example, you know, a medical data, yeah. education data or disaster data. These are three data sets uh, which we are focusing on how to deal, you know, uh, these data. And uh, if we can use this kind of data set, perhaps the per, every per, everybody can have some profit, you know. So, so not discuss, uh, you know, broadly, but we have to focus Similar fields, I think, and then we have to, you know, uh, show the profits to the to the public. I think right. then we can, you know, we can not use, but we can. How to say in English? We can uh, apply, you know, uh, okay. these data uh, uh, without any identification of uh, uh, of of everybody and for uh, to do so i think uh, uh, the cooperation with the european union is really important and uh, you know and uh, discuss about this kind of you know personal personal you know data uh, treatment is really important and uh, but uh, this is really you know uh, our future cooperation i think thank you very much Excellent. I think so too, Mr. Sato. Now we have a question from Mr. Kappenstein. Yes. Thank you very much, Mr. Sato. Um, I, I second Mr. Kuhn, and it was very interesting to, to hear so many details already from the new plan, uh, the, the sixth basic plan. Um, mm -hmm. I have three, I have a lot of questions, <laughs> and I, I try <laughs> to narrow it down to three. Um, <laughs> and, and I keep it very short. Um, yes. The first one would be um, the new data management structure. I, mm -hmm. I think it's a terrific opportunity. Um, mm -hmm. And there has been a, a lot of focus in Japan on open innovation and on okay. openness. Mm -hmm. um, are, are you um, picturing um, a, a system that would be open internationally? Would, would the data be, for example, compatible or would mm -hmm. there be standards that um, where different countries could could work with this system? That's mm -hmm. question one. Uh, the, the second one, um, since you mentioned the EU, um, cooperation with the EU, with Germany is very important. Uh, I was wondering your, your personal opinion, which areas in particular mm -hmm. are important for future cooperation? Mm -hmm. Okay. And it, I'm okay. sorry, the third, the third question was just, I, I was curious when the, the, the sixth plan uh, would be presented to the public eventually, what, okay. the, what the schedule would be. Okay, Thank okay, you. okay. So for the first question, so uh, for the data margin, ma management system of, of the research and the development, I think uh, uh, concerning this, uh, we are very, we have a very close cooperation with the European Union. Because you know, so uh, under the G7 framework, we have uh, one you know uh, special working group regarding the open science, and uh, EU and Japan are co-chairs. You know? <laughs> and uh, our system is uh, my frank impression is our system is relevant to the European Open Cloud, and we are really willing to cooperate with uh, this uh, European Open Crowd. So if this uh, uh, cooperation with the European Union uh, is accomplished, perhaps, as you say, uh, you can use our data, uh, uh, especially metadata. OK, this is uh, the answer for first question. And uh, uh, focusing point, the focusing area uh, about the data is, as I said, so medical and education and uh, disaster data are really, you know, very important for the so future society, I think. So uh, we are now discussing under the data strategy uh, how to uh, deal the, these data and uh, as you know perhaps uh, we will create establish a new agency of uh, uh, digital 
uh, in Japanese government. Perhaps this agency will discuss about uh, data policies, including these three fields. And uh, uh, for the third question concerning the uh, six uh, uh, basic plan, uh, perhaps we will publish the uh, draft in one month uh, for, to have a public opinion. But we will finalize, uh, you know, fiscal year of uh, Japan uh, will finish on March. So we have to finalize uh, this plan normally by uh, March next year. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, now we have another question from Mr. Schimmel. Okay. <laughs> yes. Last uh, question. Hello, uh, Mr. Sato, there's a bit of sunlight here, so you see me. Ah, like a... <laughs> sunshine! <laughs> <laughs> sunshine, that's nice. Uh, thank you very much for, for this very detailed uh, insight into, into how Society 5.0 will, will further evolve. Now, after uh, Mr. Paul's talk, um, he mentioned also or made references to, to the to the Japanese spiritual traditions um, and, and the concept of um, of emptiness and and what it uh, could tell us and uh, that brings me to one question mm -hmm. to to have to support such a, a joint effort across mm -hmm. the society to mm -hmm. move forward and shape such an initiative mm -hmm. this obviously needs informed decisions that each individual can contribute to this mm -hmm. so so this must be based on a on a discourse culture that that knows how to contribute to such a cooperative mm -hmm. and still value-based approach mm -hmm. so that it needs a high state of self-awareness mm -hmm. so that the individual can mm -hmm. take its active part otherwise mm -hmm. the whole systemic approach would collapse i think mm -hmm. because if if people share their view what makes them happy based on the suggestions mm -hmm. that the smart infrastructure suggests mm -hmm. to them mm -hmm. then this is this is a free wheel uh, circle that does not really contain the human attri um, attitude mm -hmm. what what do you think and how mm -hmm. can you what what is part of the initiative that I think this needs a training beyond pure software development capabilities. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Uh -huh. Okay, okay. <laughs> this must be a very deep-rooted part of the initiative uh -huh. so that the innermost center mm -hmm. of your human-centered approach does not collapse. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you very much. I think this is a sort of philosophical question, I think, no? Well, but still, I mean, how do you... No, 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 I understand, you know, uh, if my understanding is correct, I think, uh, so uh, the value, Japanese, not original, but uh, some uh, special value is really important, as you said. Uh, for example, you know, uh, we are very willing to work together. Working is uh, our, you know, first priority of the value, not, uh, you know, enjoying the life. Working is the first value. So working together, sharing the contribu contribution or sharing something or reciprocity, a really very important Japanese value. So, so our society is, as you said, uh, our soci Japanese society is based on this kind of, you know, fundamental value of principles. Yes, mm -hmm. but however, <laughs> there are various people in Japan, as you know. So, you know, this is not the only, you know, type of pe Japanese people. So, but uh, sure. uh, yes, uh, but. Uh, uh, very generally speaking, every, uh, especially uh, elder people are really happy to to work or study with younger generation. So as uh, Paul Sun said, for example, for the information technologies in a primary school, perhaps 
uh, industry can contribute to, to, to the education, but also the retired people can contribute mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. the education for the information technology, for example, you know. So, mm -hmm. so how to include uh, these, you know, relevant people to the education system or other, you know, new, new uh, so social structure is really important. And also, I think this is also the case in Germany as well, because you are trying a lot of new, you know, trial, and this is really relevant to our trial, I think. So uh, your society is also uh, is based on the, this kind of, you know, fundamental philosophy, I think. So uh, for this uh, prospect, I think we can exchange uh, our opinion in the future, I think. Yes. All right. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Sato. Um, and we unfortunately we've run out of time already. So in in, <laughs> in terms of uh, your schedules and so on, uh, we are going to close the entire session. I want to uh, very briefly wrap things up here with two comments from my side. I uh, really enjoyed the insights from Japan and the discussions that we have. So thank you very much to everyone for taking part and for discussing. I take away that there are huge opportunities for Germany and Japan to cooperate, especially when it comes to data and to AI in the future, uh, to really um, have a foundation of common principles and of exchange that can actually lead to, to great benefits uh, from Germany to uh, Japan and vice versa, from the EU to Japan and vice versa. So that's the one thing. And the second, second thing that I really liked we, we heard the term happiness quite often. That is something that you don't often hear in Germany <coughs> in terms of uh, economic discussions. Um, but I think it has the potential, this whole discussion, because it, in, it focuses on the individual happiness uh, and satisfaction. And I really think that this is a great way to bridge the gaps that are evolving. I think we see that in many nations, I'm not sure about Japan, but uh, certainly in, in Germany, the divisions within our society which need bridges. And I think the concept of, uh, of Society 5.0 is a very, very promising uh, bridge to be built in the future. And maybe in Germany we can adapt some of that to our society. So to end and conclude, I want to pass quickly to Mrs. Manke. Thank you again for um, cooperating on this international innovation talk. I want to thank Professor Harayama, uh, Dr. Paul and Mr. Sato, of course, for their very, very insightful um, perspectives. And now for concluding the session, I will pass to uh, our colleague, Mrs. Manke in Tokyo. Okay, thank you very much. Actually, I don't have so much to add. Thank you very much to the speakers. And also thank you very much uh, uh, to the BDI uh, for organizing that. And um, uh, Dr. Koenen, thank you very much. And also uh, Mr. Rudelt. Um, uh, you see in the back, you see um, our website, uh, dwih-tokyo.org. If you're interested in any event, we are organizing many events here in Tokyo. We also have a newsletter. You can um, subscribe to this newsletter and you will get all information also um, on um, other topics uh, in Japan and in Germany. So yeah. that's all from our side. Thank you very much. Thank it was you. an exciting discussion and I'm very much looking forward to continue at some other time. Thank yes, you. Yes, gladly. So this session, of course, was recorded. So for everyone who wants to share the, this with others, there will be a link that we are going to provide to you. And of course, the next International Innovation Talk will happen in January uh, together with Singapore. We're looking forward to that. There is no specific date out yet, but we will communicate that in case that there's anyone interested in that. So thank you to everyone. Have a good afternoon and night in Japan. Uh, we are starting our day here with a very great start. Thank you, everyone, and take care. Stay healthy. Goodbye.